advised, we understand some of the content of this presentation may be emotionally triggering in nature. Please listen as you feel comfortable. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are headed into our final episode of season one of our Tusk Against Trafficking podcast. Uh, Molly and Robin, welcome back. Uh, today, we want to answer some questions that have come in um, over our series of podcasts. We have several to answer. Uh, we've received some great feedback, um, and so we're thrilled about that. And um, we just continue to ask listeners, as you watch these episodes, continue to ask questions, um, and we can communicate with you, too, uh, via Facebook and things like that. So, uh, But we're going to dive in. Um, our first question that came in was, Ohio is, has been ranked fourth or fifth in the nation as far as human trafficking reporting. Um, can you guys comment a little bit on why is that? What puts Ohio right up there? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk first or do you want me? Go ahead, Robert. Okay. So um, the, there are several issues around making Ohio um, fourth or fifth in the nation in human trafficking. The first one, I think, is the extensive um, interstate highway system that we have in the state. And I, I really think that's first and foremost because people can get in and out quickly. Um, I think the fact that we um, border uh, Michigan and then up towards Canada allows um, perpetrators to get victims even out of the country. Uh, in addition to having that road system, which this all makes sense, we have the highest number of truck stops in the nation, which feeds that road system, and that all makes sense. So those truck stops are places where um, we see people uh, human trafficked uh, for different reasons, or human trafficking victims end up in, in those positions. Um, the third thing is that we have, I think it's five international airports Actually, I think there are four within two hours of Tuscarawas County, and there are mm -hmm. five or six um, within distance of Ohio. Um, you have Pittsburgh International Airport. You have Cincinnati, um, Cincinnati's airport. You have Columbus, Columbus's airport. Mm -hmm. um, you even want to include Detroit's airport in on that as well. Cleveland um, as well. Yeah, and Cleveland. Um, so, so it's easy to get people in and out, and I think that's the – that's the bottom line. It's just easy to get people in and out quickly. Um, we also have um, pro sports teams. Uh, we know that um, the Hall of Fame week in Canton is the largest week of human trafficking typically in the state of Ohio. Uh, this past or a couple years ago when the um, MLB um, game was held in Cleveland, um, the uh, Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department, in conjunction with a number of different task, for, task forces, um, had a, a bust because there was a large number of um, women human trafficked into the area to support the middle-class men who were coming in to spend money and spend the weekend. Um, so having those sports teams is a draw for people trafficking uh, women come in and out. So, so we have a lot of things going on, but the bottom line is it's easy to get people in and out. Molly, anything to add to that? The only thing I would um, add to what Robin already mentioned was just the location of Ohio in general. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, um, you may know the stat better, is it eight hours within like 60% yes. of the I think it, counties? 60% yeah. of the U.S. population yeah. is within eight to 10 looking. hour drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you really think about that, we have mm -hmm. such reach mm -hmm. to our our nation's population. Mm -hmm. And so just the location of Ohio mm -hmm. makes it a prime mm -hmm. location for human trafficking. And the agricultural aspect too, when mm -hmm. we think about, you know, like I, I guess more or less what I was talking about related more to sex trafficking. But if you're thinking about labor trafficking, we have a huge agricultural need. Mm -hmm. And a rising so, immigrant population. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah, those are some key issues um, uh, that is going to put us right there at the top fourth or fifth. And again, 
we do have increased awareness. So there is increased human trafficking reporting, which is a good thing that we're getting uh, more awareness out there. I think that's a really key issue to remember. We're talking about fourth or fifth for reporting. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, again, just human trafficking is so underreported. You know, it's hard for us to really know what's going on everywhere. Well, and those stats are uh, coming from the National Human Trafficking Hotline, Mm -hmm. which doesn't necessarily encompass all of the data that we mm-hmm. know exists. Right. Human trafficking, that's another issue. Um, collecting data around human trafficking is really very difficult because it's collected by four or five different entities, and so um, it's sporadic, and we're not sure that it's combined appropriately. Um, and there's such a, a an emphasis on not duplicating counts that I, I feel like sometimes people get left out of the count because we're worried about them being counted somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I would say that a legitimate source of reporting is through the, the uh, polarisproject.org right. where you know the human trafficking right. hotline is, is housed. So again, that's a great resource for us to check in with uh, is polarisproject.org. So if you're interested in learning more. Uh, okay, Robin. We're on the topic of Ohio. What uh, another question that came in was: What legislative laws does the state of Ohio currently have in place to protect victims of human trafficking? I think the very first um, uh, federal law that pertains to Ohio is the Trafficking Victims Protect- Protection Act of two two thousand, and that kind of started the ball rolling. I, I'm not going to go over all of the legislation that exists because there are so many different pieces. Um, but what I will tell you is if you just do a Google search for um, human trafficking laws in the state of Ohio, you can get a, uh, a really good um, listing of what's out there. And that's also available through the Ohio Human Trafficking Task Force dot org uh, mm-hmm. website. Um, But I do want to talk about two pieces of legislation that are, um, as far as I know, they haven't actually passed and are in place now. But one of them, um, I heard uh, Senator Tim Schaefer talk about, and somehow or another, he used to be connected to Tuscarawas County. I don't know what that is, but I think it was part of his district um, before some uh, redistricting Mm -hmm. occurred. But he's currently... um, out of the Muskingum County area. Um, there, he, along with uh, Senate, I think it's Senator uh, Fedora, are sponsoring a, a legislation that basically, if I understand it correctly, treats human trafficking as a business, um, which is what it really is. I mean, you know, it, it's a criminal activity, but it's a business, and we need to keep that in mind. But um, part of the issue around that legislation getting passed is um, it that legislation is requires keeping a list of Johns available to the public. So people who are purchasing sex and have a lot of money are not in favor of this legislation. So um, it just kind of seems like a no-brainer. If you have legislation around something as horrific as human trafficking, it should pass, but it's not the case. There's a lot of politics that ends up coming into play with this. But um, what that legislation would do, it would um, it would um, punish the Johns as well as... Um, the uh, the uh, human traffickers. Mm-hmm. Uh, currently, um, if you're caught paying for sex, it it's there's not really any repercussions for you. And in a lot of cases, depending on where you live, your name might not even show up. Mm-hmm. Um, but this legislation would change that. And so I guess if you think about it, you can see how that runs into some major issues. Uh, getting passed mm-hmm. through um, a predominantly, and my 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 feministic type role is going to come out here, but through a predominantly male uh, legislature, um, it, it's just it's been tough for him, I think, to work on that. And I think it was a difficult realization for him that um, 
it's the good old boys network that sometimes takes charge. So anyway, that that's a piece of legislation to look into. Uh, the other piece of legislation um, has to do with uh, 16 to 18 year olds being treated as adults. And this um, Ohio is the only state in the union where 16 and 18 year olds are treated as adults in human trafficking definitions. Okay, 16 and 17 year olds. 16 and 17 year olds. Yeah, 16 and 17 year olds. So if you're under 18, gotcha. yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. No, yeah, that makes sense. So um, that really doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I'm not sure why that delineation occurs. But if, if a victim is under 16, um, you only have to, um, you don't have to prove, um, what is it? You don't have to prove force. force. So it's fraud and coercion, um, which is a lot easier. Um, but if there's 16 or 17, you have to prove fraud, force, or coercion um, before they are considered trafficked. And um, I, I'm not sure why 16 and 17-year-olds are treated differently, especially with what we know about brain development and how kids yeah. act. Any. And so why Ohio? Why has that been such a, you don't know what you're saying? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if this is the reason, but, you know, in Ohio, 16 is the age of consent. Oh, so I'm gotcha. guessing that it that that's probably tied to, to that. Mm-hmm. Although I don't, mm-hmm. don't take yeah. that as, as right. absolute truth, but I'm just thinking mm-hmm. that that's probably the correlation mm-hmm. there. Okay. But that was, that's the law and it's just been very difficult to get that changed mm-hmm. for some reason. Again, going back to, um, a male dominated legislation. I think that, I don't know, talking about human trafficking is um, talking about and having people understand human trafficking is just sometimes really difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I think Mm -hmm. if you're looking at legislation and how that should work based on just logic, Mm -hmm. it's just not there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that happen, you know, in my mind, um, when police, when uh, law enforcement picks somebody up and identifies a 15 year old as a runaway because that 15 year old connected with a friend and left left home, that that's not a runaway. That's human trafficking. If that 15 or 16 year old kid girl moves in to another county with a a guy who says he's gonna he's going to love her and take care of her. And and all she has to do is have sex to bring rent in. That's human Mm -hmm. trafficking. But sometimes we don't see it that way. We see that she's making that choice. And anyway, yeah, I think that those kinds of Mm -hmm. thought processes drive legislation kind of seems unrelated, but Mm -hmm. in my mind it is. Okay. All right. So those two pieces of legislation Mm -hmm. are currently Mm -hmm. in the house Mm -hmm. waiting to be processed and Mm -hmm. passed. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing all that. Okay. Um, And another question we had, uh, what is being done in the community here to help survivors? Holly, you want to take that one? Yeah. So we um, have been working on two big, I think, things that we're doing here in Tusk County. Um, The one is we have started a drop-in center. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, that is occurring every third Wednesday of the month. Okay. Um, they're at the Off the Wall Ministry Center. Okay. Um, they are allowing us to use their building um, during that time. And so this is a place where anyone who's just in need of support, of you know, that physical, emotional support, can stop in and just receive a, a gift of essentials. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's going to vary month to month. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be personal hygiene, it might be food, it might, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. um, we have to give out that month, but it's just a way for us to be intentional about building relationships here. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And, um, we have a number of churches and, and organizations here in the community that have, um, been so gracious to, partner with us mm-hmm. in the drop-in center and are providing those donations monthly. That's so, awesome. So that's that would great. be, our, the next one would be November 18th. 18th. Yes. 18th. Okay. And what time? Um, 11 to one and four to six. Okay. And really you just stop by, 
stop by and receive your bag of essentials. And, and that's all. There's no commitment that we're asking from anyone. Okay. So wonderful. And I just want to say that's an, another great example of community collaboration mm-hmm. in this, mm-hmm. in this County and how people, um, can be intentional in um, creating relationships with people. And in um, the discussion with Angel that I had, which I, if you only watch two podcasts, the two I would ask you to watch are the one with Angel and the one with um, Adam Fisher and Suzanne Lewis-Johnson on the Internet Safety. But um, one of the things that Angel kept talking about was her relationship, how she had that one relationship that that one person who seemed to believe in her. And, and I feel like that's what this drop in center mm-hmm. is creating for people who need a little bit of that's right. um, connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people just need to know that someone cares, mm-hmm. you know, that's, it goes a long way. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, anything else we're doing here in our community? Yeah. And um, another thing that Tusk Against Trafficking is working on is developing um, like a procedure guide. Um, this is where we are kind of writing out what um, each um, service provider um, is doing here in Tusk County if they were to run into someone with with some red flags of human trafficking. So this is more of like a resource guide. So if I... Um, was working with somebody and I, and I felt that there were some red flags, I could refer to this resource guide and kind of see who's doing what and what's going to happen if I refer this person to this service provider. Um, and so we're working on that. And I think that is really going to be good in trying to just bring service providers together to collaborate a little bit more. And it is also going to help us identify where the gaps are in our community as far as services go. Mm-hmm. So those are two things that Tusk Against Trafficking is working on. Okay. Um, always, um, we have advocacy services going on at Compass, um, Harbor House, just with advocates here in the community in general. We are always here with a 24-hour crisis line. We're doing advocacy at the hospital, at, at police stations and courts. And so always offering that support Mm -hmm. to those who are at risk. Wonderful. And then Jocelyn, I think also you're providing mentoring. Yeah. Yeah, We, um, at toward the goal provide mentoring for, um, teens and adults, um, women, um, especially those that have been vulnerable or survived, um, trafficking. So that is something that we provide and we, we want to do. Um, also we have, um, a presentation right now called beyond the screen which we are doing, we're going into churches and talking to youth groups uh, and parent groups um, and anybody, um, like I said before, small uh, moms groups that want us to come out to their house or whoever, um, we're doing that. um, And that is about online uh, safety and predators, identifying predators, and then what we do, how we respond. It has been received very well. Um, One of our, our team members is doing that, and it's been neat to watch the kids be engaged. We've gotten great feedback from their leaders um, and saying, you know, it's a tricky thing because it's, it's, it can be heavy. And she gets them engaged. They break it up into small groups. They have facilitators. Uh, their leaders are facilitating. So it's really, it's a good thing. Um, the parents have been super supportive, and they want their kids to hear this stuff. So it's been really good. So if there was that. If anybody's interested, uh, please reach out to Toward the Goal, um, and or can contact here us here at Tuscan Trafficking, and we can um, take care of that. Um, so that's been a really a neat that's thing. That's great. I think in general, um, you know, we're still here and available to talk to groups um, about human trafficking in Tusk mm-hmm. County. We can come talk to a neighborhood group, a social group, a business or organization. Um, just reach out to us and let us know. And um, also, speaking of teens, um, you know, Compass still has our prevention program that we go into the schools and talk to students about the primary prevention of sexual violence, which also encompasses human trafficking. Now, I will say this has been a very difficult year (laughs) to um, work with schools and and reach students, Um, you know, COVID, uh, 
but um, we are still here. And so we look forward to, uh, to when we can really get back into a regular routine with our students in the schools. We miss them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. And, and that education piece for students mm -hmm. and using the internet and for parents and how kids should be involved in the internet is so critical yes. because it's not about, you know, the first first instinct of a parent is to say, that's it, I'm going to ban them from the internet. But that is so unrealistic. <laughs> and it's just more important to have to empower mm -hmm. kids to use the internet and empower parents to be involved with kids as they they go through that process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Going back, um, Molly, you, when you mentioned the policies and procedures or that, that uh, manual, mm -hmm. that will be sent out to um, partners of Tusk Against Trafficking as far as service providers. But if anybody else would want oh, to have yes. that, they this can will contact be, us. Mm -hmm. okay. This will be a very shareable docket or okay. document. So absolutely. If you're already um, a partner of Tusk Against Trafficking, you will get that once it's um, completed. But if anybody else would like a copy, absolutely. Okay. Wonderful. I'm sure you can probably um, house it on the website as well. And that's resources. that was kind of our plan that's that we would idea. like to do. So Good. it's always accessible. Mm -hmm. Awesome, wonderful. Okay, um, we have something pretty exciting coming up mm -hmm. that I would love for you to share about Robin. So, okay, um, we are working with Grace Teles, who uh, is with Advocating Opportunity, which is an agency out of Columbus. And with Emily Dunlap, who's an attorney in that agency, to have an online training uh, specific to labor trafficking. Uh, Grace Teles brings so many years of working with labor trafficking victims, um, that experience to the table that we're really excited to have her uh, do that for us. Um, we are currently hoping to have this the first Full, well, the first week of December, starting November 30th through then, we're going to try to schedule a date in there. Um, but we're very excited about this opportunity. It will be an online training, obviously. Um, it won't be lengthy, probably an hour to an hour and a half. Um, she's going to talk about um, labor trafficking victims um, and how labor trafficking occurs, and also talk about resources that can help labor trafficking victims. Um, so I'm really excited to get her in on this. She has a lot of expertise, and um, Emily Dunlap is, um, is an attorney who has um, very closely worked with the Ohio Human Trafficking Task Force and provided a lot of resources for victims as well. So going to be a great training wonderful and we'll promote that on we our facebook page on our facebook okay. page and we hope that all of our partner agencies will promote that as well okay robin would you say that the training will be appropriate for the just our general community or yes. is it really aimed at service providers i think i think it will be appropriate for the general community but she will talk about uh the different uh levels of visas so there will there will be some information that would be appropriate for agency providers to help them understand what a, a human trafficking victim can do to get out of that um, out of that pipeline. Okay, great. So, and people could sign up then through that. You'll, there'll be a link, and people can sign up. Yes, okay. um, awesome. Compass has graciously agreed to um, host that through their Zoom platform. Um, so that makes me really happy because um, uh, they, Rhonda has the expertise in setting that up, and so we'll be promoting it uh, through that. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for the hard work you've done in organizing that, contacting well, we'll them. Wait till it's done. <laughs> hey, we're excited, though. That's awesome. Yes. So, awesome. Okay. Anything else you ladies would like to say before we sign off here? I just know um, for the – all of our community members that have watched these podcasts, we are so grateful mm -hmm. to them. Um, really just hoping that this was educational for our listeners. And um, like you said earlier, if, if there are still questions, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, our Facebook page is always there. Mm -hmm. um, and we are 
between those of us who monitor, we are responsive uh, to what's going on. And, and I, I do want to point out that through a number of the podcasts where we talked about survivors and um, uh, all of the different components of human trafficking, uh, one of the common themes goes back to one of the things that you really stressed, Jocelyn, which was being intentional in relationships with people. Um, it's not that you need to spend a lot of time, but um, check in with people and um, just mm -hmm. make make it a point to do that on a periodic basis. Absolutely. And if you have to schedule it on your calendar, mm -hmm. you know, just set a reminder mm -hmm. that says, mm -hmm. "Hey, I haven't talked to so and so in mm -hmm. a while, and let let me do that." And it's those intentional relationships yeah. that seem to be a lifeline to people, and maybe sometimes keep them going when they're in their deepest, darkest place. Absolutely. Again, people want to know, we all want to know that somebody cares and that mm -hmm. we're not alone. Mm -hmm. And so as people come to our mind, we can do that, schedule it like you said, but just follow through, just care, mm -hmm. you know, um, make an effort. So wonderful. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you so much, listeners. We have truly appreciated being able to do this. It's been fun with you ladies. Um, but it's, it's been a, it's been a privilege to serve, um, you in this way. So thanks again, guys, for the time. Um, mm -hmm. thanks to Josh, um, all and, uh, and get level podcasts. Um, it has, we were just very thankful to him and the job that he's done. So thanks everyone for tuning in to season one of Tusk Against Trafficking podcast. If you would like to contribute to anti-trafficking efforts in Tuscarawas County, you can send your donations to Compass at P.O. Box 481, New Philadelphia, Ohio, 44663. Please be sure to indicate human trafficking in the memo line. We appreciate your partnership in this work. Together, we can make a difference.